Okay, so this is the second part of the tutorial Silo to MovieZoo, how to take the uh, object models of the MovieZoo characters and extract geometry from them and then create um, attachments and so on and so forth for those same characters in MovieZoo. And as you recall on our first installment we took the boy character and we highlighted the uh, the uh, surfaces around his neck and copied them and uh, moved them away from the body and uh, shelled them to give them thickness and then we uh, moved it to the origin of XYZ equals zero which is pretty much where we are now. At, at the end of the movie or the last video we uh, we saved it as an object file. But I want to talk about something else because uh, this is going to add a layer of dimension to the idea of uh, UV maps. Uh, the last time we created the UV map for just one of the uh, the infantrymen, which didn't have any insignias on the collar, and so we were just able to export the uh, surfaces randomly, and they didn't have to be in any order because we weren't going to have anything contiguous to anything else to put a picture on. This time we're going to ramp that up um, to the next level, and we're going to uh, put an insignia on the collar for this officer. And we're not going to change the procedure too much, but I want to show you uh, some cool things that you can do with the UV maps. So over here, uh, press space bar to open the UV screen, and now we can see both of these at the same time. As you recall, the last time when we went to the UV maps, we recreated the UVs per face. And that doesn't keep anything together, it just puts all of the, it just breaks it up into like a million pieces, like a broken vase or something and makes them all the same color. So it doesn't really matter uh, if you're just making it a color or a generic texture, it doesn't matter if they're um, not beside each other. But if you're gonna require a picture that goes across more than one cell at a time, those surfaces need to be together on the UV map. Now you notice if, if I click over here on, on, any, on a surface, this is that surface right here, because they both highlighted. If I click the surface below it, this is the one below it, and they're, they're not even close to one another. This is the next one. And so you can see how problematic it would be if I superimposed the insignia on this, uh, it, would be, it wouldn't be picked up by the right places. So the, the thing that is neat about this is that Silo keeps up with, with the coordinates of these. So you can literally uh, double click on a surface, provided that surface is, is the method of selection down here. It'll, it'll work the same in both screens. It'll work in the UV screen and also in the model screen. So with surface selected, I just clicked on this and you can move it somewhere else. You can even change to a uh, vertex mode and you can select a vertex and you can change the size or shape of it and the main thing that's important is that this the stuff is proportional. Um, if you make something dramatically different than than the the, uh, the material that I use for like the felt that's in these that's in this collar, it'll look like it's at a different resolution on one of the cells, and you don't want that. So it's probably not a good idea to do too much changing. I'll put that back where it was with undo. But what I did, in the same sense that I picked, let's go back to surface, in the same sense that I picked here and, and saw where that uh, surface was over here, I did the same thing here. I found all three of these surfaces and I dragged them together so that they are in the same order as they are on the model and they're contiguous to each other. Same thing over here. I found these three surfaces and I just did exactly the same thing that I did up here I just double clicked until the gizmo appears and then I drug it to where I wanted it to be and in this case I think I, I probably did enlarge it a little bit these these cells were already a little bigger than the other cells but I, I may have I made sure that they were each each of these were the same size as each other so that whenever I had a picture that came across uh, that that was partly represented on 
multiple cells that it would flow logically from, from surface to surface. Put this back. Okay, so if you know that you want to put a graphic on, onto some of the cells, once you get those cells organized correctly, and then you, you save UV materials, export UVs to image. Once you, once you save that to an image, then, then you can bring that uh, into your image editor. Th this is the final texture that I created from the UV map, but just so you see how it works, I'm gonna open the, uh, here's the UV map, I'm gonna open, and then I'm gonna um, copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it as a new layer. And I'm gonna drag it below this, and then I'm gonna make this transparent so you can see. What I did was I painted using this UV map as my basis I covered most of it with just a gray material texture and then over these designated spaces that are going to be the logo, I cut and pasted a logo and made sure that they ended up on those spaces with the top one being top in both cases on both sides and I tried to position it about the same way. So therefore that's what you end up with as a, uh, as a texture for the collar. So, back in here, when I have when, when you have your UV map selected and you go out from, from the material editor, you click these three dots to find the texture that you want to apply. And in this case, we want to apply this officer collar uh, confederate texture. And it, and it populates that. You can see here, and it shows you a picture up here of what it's going to look like and it puts it uh, over top of the uh, UV map and then it also you would, you would typically apply to the model and there you have it of course it was already applied but I'm just re re reiterating the steps so that's how you uh, you put pictures on UV maps uh, now in some cases there may be so much detail that, that you want to do something like this for for the whole surface but in a case like this, where most of the surface is uh, is just a, a gray texture, uh, why go to any extra work? You know, the only thing that's important are these six surfaces right here. So just in the sake of keeping it easy, that's a very easy way to make very regional uh, improvements to your UV map. But when you uh, are dealing with two screens here, whichever one you're, you're clicked in, uh, whenever you hit uh, spacebar, that's the one that becomes the screen that's left. So I'm going to hit spacebar to op open them both. I'm going to click in this screen over here to make it my active screen. And there we go. So now we've got the collar extracted from the boy character. We've got a UV map created and painted to have the pattern that we want. So from this point, we have to go to object selection mode and select the object. And it, it's moved approximately to XYZ0. We're going to go to file. Save selected objects. And we're going to go to uh, Project Civil War in this case. Models, Officer Collar Boy. And we're going to save it as uh, Test, Test Collar. Because I don't want to overwrite my finish collar. Okay, so at this point we're done in silo. And this is pretty much the same place that we got to on the last tutorial, except that this time we covered a little bit more information about how to deal with the UV map and the, and the texture on it. So we can get out of here because we're done with that. Now uh, we've got it saved as an object. And we want to open the object in Blender. Blender is a free program, and I strongly recommend that you try it because it uh, 
It may be all you need. If, if you don't use it for anything else, it's awesome for converting object so that you create in other software that you like or that you already know how to use into FBX. So from the Blender interface, we come to File, Import, Wavefront uh, OBJ. That's the format that we just saved it in in Silo. So then we will navigate to the directory where we just saved it and test caller obj and make sure you don't go brain dead and click the mtl file because uh you'll wonder why nothing happens correctly and don't ask how i know that but make sure you click it on the obj and then import obj now it's pretty small so you, you won't even see anything but it's there and it doesn't really matter because you're just using it as a conversion anyway now now that it's been loaded you come to file export FBX and one thing that you want to do you, you've got on, on the left side of the screen you've got some options that you can set for exporting FBX one of them is geometry right here geometry if you click geometry you've got some options here on how the surface should be smoothed normals only will leave it uh, very angular looking, which would be good if the surface is supposed to be cut glass or a diamond. You would want it to retain those edges. But in this case, we want it to be, we want those edges to be smoothed like cloth. So in this case, we want face, we want, we want it to be smoothed by this, this faces smoothed to get together, not the edges. So we click face and then we come up here to, uh, the directory you want to save it to and give it a name uh, test caller I think and you, you don't even have to type FBX because Blender will do that okay so that's all that we need Blender for uh, we can get out of out of Blender now we'll come back to uh, MovieZoo and we've got this Confederate officer here with no collar. He needs a collar. And we just created the collar in Silo and we converted it to FBX in Blender. So we should be able to right click on the officer, uh, come down to neck, click this import icon, and Going to find the uh, officer color boy test collar, the one we just made. And then we wait. Now, as is often the case, I may not have sized that character that, that we created the, uh, the model from. It may, it may not be sized exactly the same. And I have noticed that depending on what you use the uh, attachment for it, it can be sized slightly differently or e and even positioned differently by MovieZoo. So in this case, uh, I'm going to scale scale it up, and it's still not showing. So I'm going to see if I can find it here. Okay, so it's it's kind of low. Raise it up, bring it forward, and bring it down. Nothing ever comes in exactly like you thought it would. Now for some reason, and, and this is not what normally happens, but for some reason it didn't keep the, uh, the texture that we put on it. So, uh, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Let's go back and, oh, I know why. Well, I'm not sure I do know why. I, I, I must have skipped a step here somewhere. Let's, uh, let's put the, the other collar on. I know that I, uh, I did everything for this one. OK. 
Okay. There we go. And that's a pretty good example of the kind of nonsense problems that you run into when you try to uh, create stuff from scratch. But um, it's basically, we have covered the, the task of creating, creating the collar from a model, trying to resize it and put a texture on it, and then bring it into MovieZoo. And there you go. I think that's pretty much it.